been struck and objects are raining down now. Despite having countless issues with various referees over the years, there is still one name who rises above all others when it comes to Celtic's contentions with Scottish football officials, and that name is Hugh Dallas. Dallas started as a referee in the 80s and quickly rose up the ranks. By the mid-90s, he was one of the top officials in Scotland and refereeing at international level, including games in the 1996 Olympics. His reputation grew as the decade went on, and soon he would be trusted with officiating the biggest fixture in Scottish football, the Old Firm Derby. His first Celtic Rangers encounter was a November 1995 league game at Ibrox, which ended in a 3-3 draw, and Dallas was widely praised for his officiating of the game. He then took charge of the November 15th 1996 league game at Celtic Park. With Walter Smith's team 1-0 up, Dallas awarded Rangers a 68th minute penalty, which Paul Gascoigne missed. With 5 minutes remaining, Dallas then awarded Celtic a penalty and a chance to level the score, but Pierre van Hooydonk also missed. On top of that, he also ordered Celtic manager Tommy Burns to the stands for complaining about a series of decisions which favoured Rangers. This was one of the most heated seasons of all time, as Celtic looked to stop Rangers from winning an 8th consecutive title, so there was intense pressure on Dallas here. Rangers assistant manager Archie Knox was hit in the head by a coin thrown by a fan during the game, an omen of things to come. His next derby game came the following season, March 16th, 1997, again at Parkhead, and again in a match where Rangers would win 1-0. Dallas's performance on the pitch didn't face much criticism this time. He sent off Malky Mackay of Celtic and Mark Hately of Rangers. Celtic's Italian attacker Paolo Di Canio got in an angry confrontation with several Rangers players after the final whistle, including Ian Ferguson, who Di Canio said called him a Fenian Italian bastard. Dallas would send Di Canio off in the referee's room post-match for his reaction. Dallas would then officiate Celtic's 2-0 win over Rangers in January 1998, a game which passed without any criticism of the referee's performance. During the warm-ups, Paul Gascoigne imitated the playing of a flute in an attempt to antagonise Celtic fans, but the SFA bizarrely would not accept video evidence at the time, and Dallas made no mention of the incident in his post-match report, as it was almost certain that he didn't actually see the incident happen. Another few old firm fixtures for Dallas passed without incident, and he was now one of the most trusted officials in Scotland. Then came May 2nd, 1999. Rangers had a chance to seal the title at Celtic Park, and there's no real surprise when Dallas is announced as referee ahead of the game. What happened next would define the Lanarkshire man's career for better or worse. Dallas blew for the first round of the game after just 18 seconds. In the 14th minute, Ranger striker Rod Wallace leaned into Celtic's French defender Stefan Mahe with his right elbow. Hugh Dallas strangely blew for a foul in Rangers' favour, then proceeded to book Mahe for dissent following his reaction to the decision. Just after the half hour mark, Mahe was on the receiving end of a blatant foul by Rangers' Neil McCann, and Dallas opted not to book McCann for the tackle. Mahe complained about the decision not to book McCann, and Hugh Dallas responded by showing Mahe a second yellow card to send him off. Mahe would angrily sprint to confront Dallas on the pitch at this point, and the already vitriolic atmosphere in the stadium became even worse. In the 39th minute, Dallas awarded Rangers a free kick on the edge of the Celtic box towards the right corner flag. There was confusion as to whether a corner or a free kick had been awarded, with Rangers Giovanni Van Bronckhorst unsure of what to do. Hugh Dallas would inform Van Bronckhorst it was a free kick, and encouragingly pat the Dutchman on the backside. A Celtic fan stormed onto the pitch at this point to confront Dallas, and had to be dragged away by security. 30 seconds later, as Rangers went to take the free kick, Dallas suddenly fell to the floor and looked up to reveal his head dripping with blood. He'd been hit in the head by a coin thrown from the crowd. Englishman Paul Hodge was sentenced to a three-month jail term for throwing the coin, but later had a sentence quashed as it could not be decisively determined it was the coin thrown by him that had actually struck Dallas. It took almost two minutes for Dallas to be patched up and play to resume. Dallas blew his whistle to restart the match, the free kick was crossed into the box, and with the ball still in the air, Dallas blew his whistle again to immediately award Rangers a penalty. Celtic midfielder Paul Lambert could be seen mouthing that the penalty was awarded because of the coin, and television replays showed the penalty decision was contentious at best. Commentary tripped over themselves to try and praise Dallas for his so-called bravery in continuing to referee the match and award Rangers a penalty, but upon replays couldn't bring themselves to admit how blatantly incorrect the decision was. 
Rangers went on to win the game, which contained another red card for a Celtic player, plus an 85th minute red card for Rangers' Rod Wallace, at which point the result had long been decided, and it was theorised by Celtic fans that this was merely an attempt to try and play the well, I also sent off a Rangers player card. The fallout was that Hugh Dallas became the most hated man on the green side of Glasgow. That evening, the windows of Dallas' house were smashed in. A self-employed joiner called Kevin Dunn was later found guilty in court of throwing a bottle which smashed two windows in Dallas' home. Though Dunn denied this, when asked in court regarding the incident, Dallas stated he'd opened the door of his home after hearing the windows been smashed and recognised Dunn as he'd known him socially for 20 years. The Daily Record would publish a story the day after the game, heralding Dallas for his performance, stating he was guilty of only two or three errors. Those including red card decisions against Celtic and the penalty to Rangers, which completely determined the course of the game. Then Celtic Chief Executive Alan McDonald commissioned top psychologist Chris Lewis to investigate Hugh Dallas' behaviour in the match. Lewis initially caused a storm when he blamed Dallas for sparking chaos at Parkhead with over-friendly gestures towards Rangers players, referring to the pattern of Rangers players' backs after awarding them key decisions. However, in Lewis's full report, Celtic players were accused of extreme dissent, threatening and abusive behaviour, and assault. He accused Stefan Mahe of acting like an angry and frustrated child, and stated, Most of the refereeing decisions that angered the home side were in fact correct, but he was not flawless. The referee has a very noticeable style. He is clearly recognised for it and is seen as appropriate for big games. On this occasion it fired the intensity of the event, but probably produced effective order on the pitch. To the surprise of nobody, Dallas was also awarded the Scottish Cup final several weeks later, another game between Celtic and Rangers, but this one passed without any major incidents, and despite his now loathed status among Celtic fans, Hugh Dallas was firmly considered the top official in Scottish football. Dallas returned to Celtic Park to officiate the final Old Firm Derby of the Millennium on December 27, 1999. The Celtic board objected to the appointment of Dallas as referee, but this objection was overruled by the SFA. The game ended 1-1 with no major controversies, though Celtic fans continued to accuse Dallas of a pro-Rangers bias during the game. Throughout the rest of his active refereeing career, Celtic and Hugh Dallas maintained a tense, untrusting relationship, but no further massive bust-ups occurred. Chris Sutton joined Celtic just a year after the coin thrown incident, and would later make his dislike of the referee known, stating, I never liked Hugh Dallas. I thought he was an ignorant referee. I remember getting injured in a game at Aberdeen. I think I had a bad knee injury and was out for a long time. I told Hugh that I felt my knee go and I asked him if he could stop the game. He turned around and told me to get on with it or words to that effect. I thought that was really poor from him. I asked him to stop the game because I was injured and he didn't and that summed him up. In Celtic 6-2 triumph over Rangers in August 2000, Dallas was fourth official on the day and could be seen frantically and aggressively trying to stop Martin O'Neill from celebrating or over celebrating several goals. Dallas retired from professional on field refereeing in 2005. Four years later, he was appointed as the head of referee development by the SFA. In October 2010, Celtic were playing Dundee United in a league game at Tanadice. Referee Doogie McDonald awarded Celtic a penalty before consulting with his linesman, then deciding to reverse the decision. It was unclear what or who prompted the reversal of the penalty award, but things only got more convoluted from there. Linesman Stephen Craven said, Doogie ran towards me and said, I think I've effed up. After the game, Doogie said we should tell the referee supervisor that I called him over to question the penalty award. I went along with it because I wanted to be supportive of Doogie. The referee and assistant would repeat the lie to Celtic manager Neil Lennon after the game. However, Craven wanted to come clean to head of referee and Hugh Dallas in the aftermath. Amazingly, Dallas twice told Craven to repeat the lie when asked about the incident and refused to accept the truth. The Scottish referees had gone on strike over the incident and Dallas's position as head of refereeing hung in the balance. But just as all this was going on, it would be another incriminating story that came out in the press that would be the end of Hugh Dallas's Scottish football career. Dallas was found to have forwarded a sectarian email from his SFA email account. The email showed a road sign of an adult holding a child's hand. It was captioned, Caution, the Pope is coming, in reference to the papal visit to Scotland in September. Peter Kearney, director of the Scottish Catholic Media Office, said the email was an example of deep, wide and vicious anti-Catholic hostility. Dallas was sacked on November 26th and planned to sue the SFA for unfair dismissal, but the case was settled before it reached court. 
The National Secular Society and even outspoken atheist Richard Dawkins would criticise the SFA for the decision and lend their support to Dallas, but the decision was final. Hugh Dallas had a highly successful career as a referee. Outside of Scottish football, he officiated at the 2002 World Cup, even being awarded the quarter-final game between the USA and Germany. He turned down US claims for a penalty after a handball incident that caused plenty of controversy and appeared to be the wrong decision, but FIFA still appointed him as fourth official for the 2002 World Cup final. He would go on to work in referee governance roles in Greece and Turkey in later years, and now regularly contributes to newspaper columns in Scottish media. In a 2023 interview with PLZ Sport, Hugh Dallas admitted to an error in an old firm game. He claimed he should have sent off Celtic's Pierre van Hooydonk, already on a booking, for celebrating an equalising goal by jumping into the crowd in the first derby game he took charge of, that 3-3 draw at Ibrox back in 1995. Dallas claimed he didn't care if he would come under supervisor criticism, it would be wrong to book a player for celebrating such an important goal in such an important game. Just one issue there. The yellow card rule for jumping into the crowd when celebrating a goal wasn't introduced until 2004, some nine years later. Interesting that Dallas, as experienced an official you could find who went on to rules and refereeing governance, would knowingly lie about this. But then again, he does have previous for lying about issues related to Celtic. The coin throwing incident largely overshadows Hugh Dallas's career and is the main reason for making him such an infamous figure in the history of Scottish football. He has a long career and I'm sure he can be proud of that, but I doubt there will ever be anything other than disdain from Celtic fans for Hugh Dallas.